What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Combat Corporation, your source of combat sports. I'm your host, Al the Postmaster Tomorrow, and today I have a gear review on the Venom Impact Boxing Gloves. Alright folks, as always, I'm incredibly excited to bring you yet another gear review as today. I have a pair of gloves that I've had for a while and that's been requested that have been lost in time of my collection. I get comments all the time, Al, you probably can't use all your gloves because you have so many. Kinda true, kinda not. Uh, these are one of the gloves that has escaped me over time. These are the Venom Impact Boxing Gloves. And these are gloves that have been requested since around Black Friday of 2020 is when I got these. So almost three years ago. Uh, two months shy of three years, guys, which is pretty nutty. Uh, but basically, uh, these gloves are part of Venom's big pro boxing takeover. I think they were around a little bit longer than that because Impact, I believe, was like an MMA glove that they have or still do have. Uh, but Venom Impact was a part of their big pro boxing release and it's a pair of gloves for me that is ultra popular amongst everyone that uses venom gear for me one of the top three most sold venom gloves out there you got uh, like the venom gladiator looking gloves and you got venom contenders you can get at walmart the giant series you also have venom contenders and then of course yeah, I think I already said contenders, but I said it twice, whatever. Uh, but then you have the impacts. And for me, this is what I call a transitional glove. And what I mean by that, guys, is there are gloves out there that are for the professional. There are gloves out there for the beginner and the intermediate. This, to me, is the key intermediate glove that will tell you what kind of puncher you are, whether you are a true puncher, you want a glove that doesn't have a whole ton of padding that really gives you a nice recoil and a good shot, you like feeling the impact, or you might be a pillow style puncher. You might have bad hands and you really want a glove that just really cradles your knuckles. You don't care how it feels so long as it protects your hands. Then there are defensive gloves that have really thick rounded padding that's big so you can catch shots. Still could have a puncher's or pillow style feel to it. Uh, watch my video on that. It's still my most viewed video even though I work so hard on these. But anyway, uh, at the end of the day, uh, I kind of decipher what those are in the back of my head. What type of puncher's glove or what type of gloves you're going to have. Whether it be puncher, defensive, or pillow. That's how I categorize uh, them by. And then there's also hybrids. In this case, these are kind of like everything all in one. It's trying to show you exactly how you're supposed to feel. I think these are definitely more in the pillow category. And, um, you know, Venom's description of these gloves is really interesting because if you go on their website, it actually says that these are weapons of mass destruction, which is probably illegal for me to own them in that case. But at the end of the day, uh, these are really nice gloves. Uh, they run you about 80 bucks at the end of the day, but they're always on sale, guys. You can get them. I mean, I got them on Black Friday. They were already 50% off plus a Black Friday discount code for like 20. So, I mean, I got them for like 28 bucks, I think. And I think they go for about 80 usually, but they're, like I said, they're 50% off on Venom's website right now. You can get them for about 40 to 50 bucks uh, after shipping and stuff like that. And they also come in a ton of different sizes and colors which we'll go into now actually uh, when we talk about these gloves i got them in the 16 ounce sizing and i got them in the holographic black i think they come in a regular black color and then they come in the holographic black now the holographic black black yeah blah, 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 black comes from um actually all the uh, holographic things that you see here so when the light catches it it reflects really nice and then when you turn it not so much. You can't see it all that great. So it's actually a really cool feature, and you have that over here on this side and on the thumb as well. Uh, so overall, it's a cool-looking glove, and you got them in a couple different sizes, okay? You can get them in 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 ounces. Venom does make 18-ounce gloves, but I just haven't seen them for the impact. And as far as colorways, guys, Venom is one of the brands out there. In fact, Fran Dupois, the guy that made Venom, his whole goal was to make a brand that had a lot of different uh, design options to look cool and operate great. Every single thing Venom has has a minimum of three to four separate uh, colorways you can get. The impact I've seen between three teammates of mine that actually use these gloves, I've seen just them alone, black and red, 
black and white, white and gold. I've seen khaki and gold. I've seen camouflage, arctic camo. I've seen red and black camo. I've seen any type of color we can think of. I've even seen like a type of royal, uh, like blue with a tinted orange somewhere on the market, which is pretty crazy. You can tell it's the impact by this line going down here, though I'm sure some other gloves have had that as well. I even think the Assassin's Creed glove that Venom had was an impact model. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. But I mean, at the end of the day, guys, uh, Venom has so many different color options. And odds are, if you see a red and black, they have one that's in black and red. They just swap the color scheme around. And that's just kind of how it works. Uh, so it's always cool to have options. So you have a ton of different sizing options, 8 through 16 ounces, and tons of colors to pick from. And they're always on sale, hint, hint. Uh, but either way, uh, you'll after the review, you'll see if you even want to buy them. But let's go into the look of the glove here and like I said I have the holographic black which you can see on the back we have that patented Venom logo which was uh, actually designed by Fran Dupois because the snake in his uh, mind was a uh, animal that was elegant but struck fear and struck quick and so that's why he went with the snake and named it Venom uh, but in this case I love the details between the forehead divot that all snakes have you have the lifted eyebrow the eye holes, the nose holes, and then the big jaw to come here and take a bite out of you with those two big fangs, especially if you throw, in this case, a left hook or a jab. You also have these nice, like, it looks like an enlarged Venom logo. As you can see, like, here, then it goes there. It kind of looks like the jaws of the snake, like, open up to eat this snake a little bit, which is a really cool feature. Other than that, the rest of the glove is an entire matte black as you can see it's a really nice dull matte black as far i don't mean dull as in the colors not popping out but like the it feels like a dull matte paint is over this glove uh then when we come to the thumb you can see here it says venom right there also in that holographic and you see the end drips down like the fangs and then you come here too to the tip of the fingers and that's where you see more of the lines there and it says venom across the tip of the fingers there when we come down here you can also see it says venom pro boxing gear and you have some raised cool lettering lettering there kind of looks like the the anti-hero venom my favorite anti-hero favorite comic book character in general honestly one of them uh and it says venom pro boxing gear right down there uh the palm uh, also has this really nice reflective material and I don't really know what that is it's a type of vinyl I'm sure but that's basically what you have going on here all throughout there okay and then on top of it you also have a couple different designs coming on the palm it's all that nice matte black and then when we open it there is actually one rubber piece here that says Venom right there I honestly don't know what that's there for but I can summarize as to why that's there when we open up the interior lining is a nice matte black and also you have your venom tags on the inside that basically says hey boxing is dangerous be careful when you use this piece of equipment so with that said it is once again very basic in design but at the same time not everything venom makes is nice and cool looking and that's why i always make the joke to my teammates why did you get venom gear oh it's reasonably priced and it's durable and then my first response is it's uh, it's because of the snake, isn't it? And that's what I say all the time. Uh, but in this case, uh, the Venom Impact uh, in this colorway looks pretty cool. But let's talk about the design that we have here. Talking out with, for once, I, I usually say like a engineered leather or fake leather is what we call a vinyl. And it is a type of man-made vinyl, but at the end of the day, this is what we would call a faux leather. It says it's made of 100% PU faux, high quality PU is what it says. And it feels like leather, but it isn't, is the easiest way to word it. You know, there are some types of gloves out there, like, um, you know, I'll go back to another Venom glove where these, the 3.0s, right, is that you can clearly tell this is a vinyl because of what it is. Then you also have other gloves out there that isn't vinyl, uh, you know, it's a man-made material, but it doesn't look like a man-made material like the Hayabusa T3s here. It looks like real leather, right? And that's basically kind of what Venom is trying to do here. They're trying to make it out to be like a real uh, leather. And it feels like a plush suede, to be honest. It doesn't have like the cloth feel that suede does, but it's like a nice smooth matte color type of faux leather that you have on the entirety of the glove, except for the palm here, which I'll go into in a second, uh, is some type of reflective, thicker rubber type vinyl. I don't really get why that's there. Maybe the strength in the stitch between the grip bar and the base of the glove, but overall, uh, it kind of feels, uh, you know, 
feels like a backpack or it feels like the grips to your bicycle almost it feels like a rubberized type of grip but as far as the entire outer shell goes it is that 100 percent high quality pu it calls it polyurethane it's a faux leather and it feels really good it feels better than some other vinyls out there then you also have a triple density it calls it on the website triple density foam layer and it is a firm foam layer and it is not stiff it's pretty soft to the touch you can see my fingers are really digging in there right and it reverts back to shape really well and has you can hear it has really nice breathability as well and honestly if i had to guess what the three layers were you probably have because it's not the thickest padding out there it's not the thickest padding of a glove if i had to guess uh with this glove um i wouldn't say there's rebond in it which is basically carpet padding it wouldn't shock me if the last layer of it was that carpet padding you know just kind of for that extra shock absorption as well a lot of other cheaper gloves do but if i had to guess if it's kind of like you know a lot of other brands out there it probably does an eva foam base and what that does is it keeps the glove in good shape and that also provides shock absorption so eva is the type of glove uh is type of foam rather that you use in like yoga mats or you use in car crashes or you use in wrestling mats very durable cold cell foam that keeps everything in good shape cradles your knuckles very well okay so it's a padding uh like it would be to catch your fall then you probably have two other layers of of some type of high density firmer foam it definitely feels a little bit more firm compared to some other ones i've definitely put it in like that medium firm category as far as uh, firmness goes uh so overall it's a pretty firm foam that you have it's one solid piece uh all the way down to here so you actually have two different pieces of the glove you have the wrist then you have the foam right up here. It's one solid piece, even to the thumb, it's all one connected piece of foam. And on the thumb, it's actually pretty uh, firm as well. It's pretty firm all the way to the back of the wrist. So overall, you got one pretty good solid mold of foam uh, of three layers that's going on there. And it's pretty good at protecting your knuckles, actually. And I'll go into that, especially after uh, you know, you'll see the bag work. Uh, but it protects my knuckles really well. Uh, overall, too, once we go, like I said, to the thumb, really nice curved thumb that keeps your thumb in a natural punch position. The glove in general is curved to where it keeps you in a natural punch position. But probably the one thing you saw is just holding that up is just it's a very top heavy glove. If I put it right in the center of my hand, it just kind of flops over. Uh, all the weight is 100 percent in the front of the glove. There's like virtually none back here. If I had to say there's probably 15 ounces here. The other one is back here. Uh, but that's basically what you have here. Uh, the thumb keeps it in a nice punch position. Naturally curves your wrist down. Uh, not too much, but just enough. And then on top of it, I like the palm. Not just because of that vinyl piece here. Uh, it feels good. Uh, you have a nice soft grip bar. It gives you nice grip and nice support. The thumb attachment is not too tight and it's not too loose either. So you can't thumb anyone in the eye if that's a concern for anyone. Then on top of it, you also have a very padded palm. So, uh, I, I, you know, in boxing, I, I know because I started in boxing at 12 and I really competed in that a lot more than I did MMA until the last, you know, five, six years is that I find a lot more people in MMA and in kickboxing drill with each other like you're holding pads, whereas in boxing, not as much. So you're doing combination drilling with each other, you know, like in Dutch drilling, it's big time. So it's like one, two, three, kick, you know, stuff like that, or two, three, two, switch kick, stuff like that. So you're catching mitts. So it's really helpful for that type of training. If you're doing that a lot, if you find yourself doing that a lot at your gym, this might be a good idea because you have basically tons of soft padding throughout the wrist down here and throughout the palm they really catch great even at the corner of the thumb you've got some good padding and when i open up the glove like this uh, after you see the velcro strap you can see that we also have that same type of plush padding down here you can see it kind of curve in and what i call it is like that insulation foam or that polyfill teddy bear foam that's kind of what it feels like on the inside there but it's soft enough to where doing those drills really actually that that padding really actually goes a long way to stabilize your hand your wrist it won't hurt quite as much if it ever hurts you uh, when we come down to the wrist strap it's actually a very short wrist strap that attaches to the inside of the of the hand so it's actually not really promoting you to strap the thumb all that great it's just kind of you know pulling away from the thumb if anything but it curves in this much and if i had to theorize what that piece of rubber down here is if you can see it right there piece of rubber that says venom uh my whole theory behind that is that when you bring this over that piece of rubber keeps it nice and tight so it doesn't go anywhere so that's my theory behind that oh and one thing i missed because of the holographic material too it tells you 16 ounce right there sorry about that guys let me see if i can bring that a little closer for you boom 16 ounces but anyway 
Uh, that's the idea behind that rubber piece there. Uh, but the other thing too is the wrist strap is kind of short and I don't like necessarily, you can literally hear like the plastic on this and it's not too rough on the skin at all, but definitely like now it's starting to burn a little bit. So if you're boxing with someone, you know, and you're like using your hands and you're like shucking off with your forearms trying to pivot off, it might rub against people the wrong way. Not a lot of people like that type of feeling. I wish it was more just smooth, uh, smooth right out. That's what I wish it had. Uh, but overall, wrist support is very short. Like I said, you can see that uh, that the wrist is actually, you know, entirely, you know, in like that. I always tell people that's what it is. You got the glove split in half here. Here's the main part of the glove, and here's the not so main part of the glove. The interior lining is your basic poly nylon that you got going on here. It's actually the base is made out of that faux leather. Uh, they're trying to copy some other gloves out there and then the rest of it is your standard nylon So when you put it on the inside here, it's just basically feels like you're putting your hand inside of a rain jacket Is the way I tell people and overall um, Really flexible glove straps to your wrist nice and secure. Does that mean it's gonna like stay on? No, it's actually you know You really gotta wrap your hands pretty good in these gloves for it to stay on I do notice when I punch in these gloves that my hand kind of creeps like out of it You know and I don't like that even with hand wraps on so I somehow have to find myself like constantly readjusting. It was the same issue that I had with my combat corner HMIT gloves. My hand just kept creeping out of it. Like my fingers couldn't stay in there. Um, but overall, I'll strap this tighter this time. Uh, overall, the wrist support you think would be really bad because of what I said and what I showed. It's actually not that bad because of the padding going down here really cradles it. But I will say, definitely if you've ever found yourself doing that, uh, yeah, no, that's the one area where the wrist support ain't great. Other than that, really stabilizes it from going back. I'm actually pushing really hard here and then going side to side. But going down, not as much. But that's on purpose because even though it says pro boxing gloves, it opens really easy to give you a nice grip, right? And if you like the parry punches, that's good too. But they're a tie glove at the end of the day. I don't care what anyone tells me because you're able to curve your wrist in. So when you grab the back of the neck and tie boxing, if you didn't know, you want to curve down so you can bring their head down that way you can start kneeing them because just pulling them like this you're just bringing their head straight whereas you curve there you go so here's straight here's curved down that's the idea you're bringing their head down like that and that's what you're doing here but overall the thumb feels really comfortable hand compartment's actually really comfortable the padding is the one thing that shocked me the most and that it does not let any shock get through i am doing this as hard as i can trying to really get through i can't feel my knuckles whatsoever so i put them more in the pillow category to be honest so like i said it's a great transitional glove because you'll find out hey i want something that's not quite this padded i like to feel the bag a little bit you know or it's like i love this let me get the next step up or let me just stay with it right or i want something a little bigger because it's not necessarily the biggest glove uh it is definitely a forward motion glove because of all the top heavy pressure very top heavy glove as i showed but in general the palm padding feels really comfortable interior lining is pretty big so you can wrap your hands up big with a professional boxing wrap i've done that in these gloves to try that out and then on top of it um overall comfort knuckle protection is really good Wrist support so far, eh, not the greatest, but you know, we'll go into the bag work and you'll see my final results on these in a couple seconds. All right, so when it comes to in the bag with these gloves, the first thing that I know is that if you're a puncher, you won't really like these gloves a whole lot because they dampen almost everything, which is great for knuckle padding and wrist support. But overall, it just feels like you, you don't feel like you're hitting the bag. You feel like the glove is hitting it for you. And that's something that I just don't like all the time. But as far as like the feedback goes, they're nice and light. Uh, they're forward fronting gloves, so they do propel your shoulders in a good direction. And overall, I have to say they do really well. All right, so when you see the look in the design of these gloves, you can see that uh, holographic logo coming out, which is a really cool design too, because I have a couple of teams that are like, oh, I didn't even see it till you turned. Uh, the matte black looks really good. Uh, it reflects the light really well as uh, on top of it all. Overall, really cool looking gloves. Venom makes really cool looking stuff that operates really well at the end of the day. So I'm impressed by the design. All right, folks, so my final verdict here for the Venom Impact Boxing Gloves is I have really enjoyed using these. They're not necessarily fit for my punching style because I really like letting off a lot of punches. I like feeling good impact and getting a nice recoil off the bag. That's just me personally, uh, and these gloves just don't do that for me. They're very, very padded in all the right ways. They will definitely keep your knuckles, your thumbs, not so much your wrist safe. We'll go into that in a minute. But overall, I think that they are a great glove, but... Here's the thing. Would I say they're a great glove for boxing? 
if for a professional boxer, no. For a beginner or intermediate boxer, yes. Um, <clears throat> and the reason why I bring that up is because the bottom of this says, as you can see here, pro boxing gear. Okay, now I am going to be quite blunt with you because a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, Al's an MMA fighter. He doesn't know boxing. My first sport was boxing. I actually didn't start MMA and wrestling until two years after I started boxing. And on top of it, I took boxing more serious than any other sport out of all of these. Actually got to a decently high level. I almost got to a tournament that would have qualified me to go to a qualifier tournament for the Olympic trials. I unfortunately lost said tournament. I've had well over 70 boxing matches. I know what type of boxing gloves I love to train in, primarily my Reyes, or I train in winnings. Sometimes I train in my uh, ringside uh, uh, bout gloves or Everlast bout gloves that I use. Uh, but in general, I just feel like if I were to give these to my boxing teammates, a lot of these guys really would not like these because the one key thing that a lot of boxers know, it's not just the knuckles because we pad those quite a bit, uh, it's your wrist. And if the wrist support ain't there like this, it ain't worth your time. So that's why I always emphasize on wrist support because honestly, guys, a lot of boxers I've met, it's not necessarily their knuckles that give them a lot of problems. It's the back of their hand and their metacarpals and it's their wrist and the top of their forearm that bothers them a lot when they punch because when you punch, the impact comes up here like that. Your bones don't break outward, they break upward like that. That's why whenever you wrap hands, you want to stabilize them across to stop them from coming up. So that's the whole idea behind that. Now, Overall, let's talk about some of the good things about the gloves because these gloves definitely have a lot of good key points. Um, and overall, I'd say that the big thing about it is that they are reasonably durable. A lot of Venom stuff out there after you spend about 60 to 80 bucks is decently durable. And I have a teammate that said he's had his Venom impacts for about two years. Other guys just got them recently, so I can't really ask them their input on them quite yet. They just say that they like them. Uh, but I have one teammate that has a black and gold pair, and he says he's absolutely loved them uh, for the last two years. And they look good, a little faded at the bottom. But, you know, I think that's just because he doesn't take as good as care of them. But I put my hand on the inside. They still feel pretty much the same as these. And overall, they look pretty good. And that's always a good thing that you have going on here with the Venom Impact. So it is a reasonably durable thing. They're very easy to clean because although it is a faux leather, it still is a man-made material. Very easy to clean a man-made material. Wipe it down. And you can, with this type of material, I'd say use something like a leather conditioner to just give it a little bit more of a shine. I always do when it comes to the gloves like these made from a type of faux leather. Leather, when they really try to replicate that leather, uh, I always put leather honey on it and it makes it look nice and vibrant. So that's always a good thing that you have going on here as far as the durability of the glove. The interior lining, pretty comfortable. It's not too baggy at all. I have to move my finger around a little bit, like towards the tip, you know, but now it's all good to go and it stays out of your way once you move it the first time. Tons of room to wrap your hands. If you do want to wrap your hands in a big professional boxing wrap, that's all up to you. But that's the idea here. The one thing about uh, boxers though is they really don't like gloves that have a short wrist cuff. They usually like gloves that like come down here so they can, for one, you're never going to see a whole lot of boxers for one really use Velcro unless they're at like a beginner level. Even if they're using uh, Velcro gloves, they're going to tape it. That's just kind of how it goes. Boxy, boxers are very much creatures of habit that do not derive from that habit at all. They have a routine. Uh, and that's the idea here. So the wrist support is not the greatest because of the short wrist cuff. And then on top of it, when I go down here, like I said, which is where more of the injuries happen, boop there goes that metacarpal popping up and that's the idea that you have happening in the back of your wrist and everything. Although I will say the knuckle padding in this glove is spot on. I think if you have bad knuckles and that's what hurts you whenever you punch, definitely a glove that you want to try and fix uh, and, and try if you're in that intermediate stage and you don't know what type of puncher you're going to turn out to be. Overall, really dampens the impact on your knuckles, which does in turn help reduce the shock going down to your wrist. So in that case, the wrist support's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's not the greatest. But the initial wrist support like this still screams to me that this is more of a tie glove than a boxing glove at the end of the day because I can grab here, get my tie clinch, and curve down with my wrist like that. And that's the whole point of that. So I think Venom calling it a pro boxing glove, it's a pro tie boxing glove, I'd say. It would work very well for a tie boxer. I think a lot of tie boxers would like these, which is why a lot of tie boxers actually do for one fight in Venom fight gloves and train in Venom gloves as well. Uh, the thumb is in a really nice spot, really protects your thumb. The padding overall is really durable. Uh, I've really liked that so far, especially looking at my teammates that has his for about two years, and the padding still feels the same. It's a little bit more broken in 
Uh, you know, I'd say uh, probably because of the overuse of them, but at the end of the day, these gloves are still, in a way, new to me. I've been using them for the last two or three months because so many people requested it. Um, that the padding definitely broke in. Comes out of the box pretty much broken in to begin with, but these definitely are a little bit more broken in than that even. Overall, um, I'd say that they are pretty durable, easy to clean, overall offer good support as far as uh, knuckle support, back of the hand support, not so much the wrist support. Uh, and overall, I think the price point of about 80 bucks, I think even some places, I think I saw 89, depending on the colorway. There's so many different options for sizes and colors. So they're eight through 16 ounces. You can get an eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 ounces, not 18 though. So if you like using 18 ounce gloves, I personally don't think you need that because the hand compartment size is perfect. The padding is perfect. Uh, but you have tons of different sizes, tons of different color schemes to, to choose from. I mean, there's over 10. I'll word it that way. We'll just we'll keep it simple. There's more than that, but there's more than 10. We'll just say that. Uh, but overall, these gloves uh, look pretty stylish. They perform really well. I just think maybe... I'd put them, I don't think 80 bucks is too far out of reach for what it's made out of and what it's supposed to do. I just personally think that if you were a boxer, you'd still probably go for... Um, let me see if I can find it. There it is. I still think you'd probably go for your ringside IMF tech because I definitely think I think the knuckle padding is just as good and probably not quite as durable, but the wrist support is much better. As you can see, we got that wrist bar at the bottom, you know, curves in, but when you strap it on, it keeps your hand up and it stops it from going forward like that. And it's not too heavy of a glove. It's actually a very well balanced glove compared to this one. When I put my hand in the middle here, I'm actually trying, my thumb is counterbalancing it. And then it just flops over, whereas my thumb has gone here and it's staying there. So overall, you know, or even if you want a glove that's of similar, like, build, that glove's going to fall. Oh, well. Um, this is a fake leather, too. It's a faux leather. This is the ringside bullet. And the wrist support is just infinitely better than that, too. I got to do a review on these, come to think of it. Uh, you know, and the padding's thicker. The wrist support's better. And in general, I think maybe 80 bucks. going back to my point of that, is... Just a bit too much for these. I'd put them in a $60 category, $50 to $60 category, and I think people would uh, choose these really well. But overall, I think uh, that's my one part that I would knock it down one point because I think it's just a little too... I think 80 bucks for these, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't spend that. They're always on sale though, so you can get these for like 40 bucks off Venom right now if you tried. But in general, I think 80 bucks is just too much. So overall guys, we got a pretty durable glove here, performs really well, great knuckle support, really comfortable, tons of room on the inside, little bit pricey compared to some other options that you can get for a little cheaper even, and then there's other options about $20 more that blow these out of the water, such as your top boxers, which are up here. Uh, you know, or your superior boxings, which I think are better than these by a long shot. But at the end of the day, guys, if I had to give these gloves a rating, it's my usual lucky number seven out of 10. It's always that score that I give gloves that are, you know, in that good category, but there could be improvements. But that's why I've introduced the tier system. So uh, the tier system that I give these is probably a B, which means it's a good glove, if not a C, which would be an average glove, okay? Uh, in fact, we'll give it that nice C because I think it just works for a lot of people. It's an average glove. It's average average made, it's average durability, it does the job, it does what it's supposed to do, it's not the greatest thing out there, it's not the worst either, so I'll give it, I'll give it a C tier, just because it is for me an average glove compared to some others, and I really would have put it to that good stage if the wrist support was a little bit better, and if the price wasn't 80 bucks for something that I could get something immediately better for 20 or 30 dollars cheaper. Uh, so with that said, um, the tier system works like this, S is excellent, A is great, B good, C is average, D poor, and then F is terrible. So I'm gonna start doing that for the rest of my videos, and then when I eventually release all my scorecards, which I wanna do one day like the other reviewers out there, kinda of to give you a better idea, so I can upload those, you can see exactly where they rank on the T scale, and uh, on the tier scale. And in this case, I give these guys a seven out of 10 as far as overall quality for me, and then a C, they're an average glove. They're not great, they're not the worst. I think they'd work for a lot of people. I just wish they were a little cheaper. But remember, they're on sale all the time. So they do get a point because of that. So with that said, guys, if you have any questions about these gloves or if you think I missed anything or tell me why, if you own these gloves, why you like them, why you think I'm wrong. But at the end of the day, guys, I really appreciate all your viewership. And of course, always go ahead, like, 
comment above all so I know what you want me to do next and subscribe uh, and hit that notification bell for all future uploads uh, and also follow me on my social media pages. I'm usually very active on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok and of course YouTube Shorts. You can always check me out on there and here is the nice graphic I made on the screen. Woo! <laughs> With that said guys, thank you so much for watching The Combat Corporation, your source for combat sports. We're almost at 7,000 subscribers. Share this with your friends and tell them to subscribe. It's free and it helps the channel a lot. With that said, guys, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I've been your host, Al the Postmaster Morrow, and as always, I'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day, everybody.